Good morning. Welcome to this ongoing online course or on engineering or architectural graphics part 2. And in this course we are discussing about isometric projections. So, in the first two lectures we have already seen understood the fundamentals of isometric projections and in lecture 2 we have already seen how to draw isometric drawing for planes. Uh, which are quadrilaterals or polygons with straight lines. Now, what we have not done up till now is curves. So, today we are going to look at isometric projections, drawing isometric projections for circles, semicircles or any other forms of curves, but these are all curves which can be drawn using compass. So, they are part of circles basically and a combination of these curves with other uh, you know quadrilaterals or polygons with straight lines. So, this is uh, what we are going to look at today. So, before I go ahead and start telling you how to draw isometric projections for circles or semicircles, we will quickly revise the fundamentals of isometric drawing. So, I repeat it again because this is what has to be kept in mind and the same thing we are going to repeat over and over. And this is the only thing which will always come handy to you when we are drawing the isometric projections. So, the first one is the lines which are parallel. So, the lines which are parallel in the object, they remain parallel in the isometric projection as well. We have seen it, we will see it again. Second, the lines which are parallel to the axis x, y or z will remain parallel to the axis and that is what we have again seen in previous lecture and we will see it again today. And then all projection points are arrived at by arriving at their parallel distances, which is what we saw when we were looking at their 2D projection in orthographics first and then we were converting it from there into isometric projections. So, for most of the uh, planes or whatever objects we are going to draw in isometric projections, we will see that the projection points are actually arrived by arriving at their distances either in vertical uh, view, in the uh, front view or the top view. So, whatever those distances are accordingly the reference uh, rectangles or the regular shapes will be drawn and then those points be derived. So, this is what we have seen and we will continue to do so. Now, I will start taking the examples of curves and I will tell you how to draw them. Now, let us take this example of circle very simple and start drawing it in isometric projections. Now, what do we do? Again what we have done very simple which is what we have done in orthographic projection as well is that we will divide the circle into some equal number of parts. Here we are taking uh, it, we are dividing it in 8 equal parts. Okay. We could be dividing it in 4 equal parts, we could be dividing it in 12 equal parts, the process remains the same. It totally depends upon what kind of shape uh, do we have. So, here we are taking 8. Now, how do we draw them? So, what we have done here is that we have taken the projections of these points, the ones which we arrived after dividing the circle into 8 equal parts. These are the ones which are just touching the square in which the circle is going to be inscribed. So, now what do we do? Assuming that this circular plane is parallel to the x y plane, okay, the horizontal plane. So, what do we do? We first make the square. I am just assuming certain dimension. You can actually take whatever dimension is there. So, you have to measure this dimension. Now, very simply you can mark. So, suppose I mark this square. A, B, C, D. Now, I will mark these four points which are simple 1, 2, 3 and 4. So, we know that the midpoint of this is 1, 2, 3 and 4. Now, there are two ways. 1, we can arrive at this point number 5. So, if we take this distance, this distance and this distance, we can mark the same distances here. We will arrive at 5. Similarly, on all other sides 6, 7 and 8. This is how you have arrived at all the 8 points of the circle. So, this circle was divided in 8. 
suppose we had 12 points like 12 parts of the circle we will be deriving uh, the distances of the remaining two points in this entire circle. So, suppose this circle was divided into 12 parts. So, we would actually be arriving at this distance ok. So, for each of these points however, here we are only dividing it in 8 parts. So, I will show you accordingly and now we have to join. So, what we will do we will again choose the French curves which is what we have seen and join all these points together. So, this is the kind of shape it is an ellipse it is a regular ellipse which is what we will see if we are drawing the isometric view of the circle. Now, suppose the circle was not uh, parallel to horizontal plane suppose it was perpendicular to both the planes how do we see it again the same process. So, if it was perpendicular we will arrive at the square in which the circle is inscribed we will arrive at these four points which are touching the square. We will arrive at these points ok. So, you can for your convenience you can mark these points 1, 2, 3 and 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 ok and again we do the same thing. we join these points ok. You will be needing French curves to join these points if you are doing it like this. Now, what you can see very clearly is it is the same circle, but how what we see has changed. So, here if you can look at this 154 this part of the curve it is now different because of the position of the plane. So, it is now kept perpendicular this part is like the smaller part of this uh, ellipse and then again the bigger one and the smaller one. Whichever way the plane is kept you will see an ellipse when we are drawing a full circle here in isometric. It could be the other way around I am showing you the simple ones first and then we will see the other conditions ok. And I will tell you another way the process remains the same you arrive at these points then you arrive at the other four points and you simply join. Do not go by my drawing here because I am drawing freehand just with the help of grid, but when you start drawing it with the help of French curve you will actually arrive at a perfect ellipse which is what you are supposed to get ok. So, again you get an ellipse. Now, there this is slightly trickier a method I have a much simpler method and it is much faster and more accurate. Now, what we have to do here whatever this rhombus is any of the any of the three uh, you know planes the square plane, but this method works only if the plane is parallel to one of the reference planes. So, either parallel or perpendicular. So, if it is parallel to HP or perpendicular to HP and perpendicular to VP or perpendicular to HP and parallel to VP is what we are looking at. So, what we will do is whatever this we will first make the enclosing rhombus ok. So, this is the rhombus that we have taken. Now, what we will do is for each each side of this rhombus we will draw the perpendicular bisector ok. I will change the color. So, what we will do is we will draw the perpendicular bisector. Now, if you draw the perpendicular bisector of this one it will it will somewhere come and meet like this and it will be like this here ok. So, these are the intersection points which we which we will get. Now, these points are the center for the arcs that are going to join our uh, remaining points. So, what we will do is taking this as center and taking this distance between I would say this is 1, 2, 3 and 4 we already had these points. Now, we have to arrive at 5. So, suppose this is O and this is P. So, taking O as center and 1 O or 4 O as the radius we will 
make a make an arc okay and with p as center and p2 or p3 as the radius we will draw another arc okay now if you will check it and if you draw a diagonal here if you go on to check it you will see that this point 7 and this point 5 is exactly where it should be okay now for the rest of the ellipse if you take this one as center so this is say your point um, okay this was b a c and d so taking d as a center and d1 or d2 as the radius we will draw an arc okay this is what we will get and then b as center and b4 or b3 as radius we will draw this okay so this is the ellipse that we will get and this is a perfect ellipse that you can you can get and it's very simple you can do the same exercise you can repeat the same exercise if the plane is vertical very simple and i'll quickly show you let's change the let's change the plane but we'll keep the method as the same so what we're doing we are drawing the perpendicular bisector of so this is what you will get here and this is the perpendicular bisector that you will get here so again the the center points here so you take this as center this as radius and we draw this arc here and we draw this arc here with this as center we draw this arc here with this as center we draw this arc we will get a perfect ellipse again okay so this is this is a very simple process to draw the circle and you can use this method this one the second one which i have told you you can use the first one there is uh, absolutely nothing stopping us but then it takes more time and then we have to fit the curve using the french curves while in this one we do not have to fit the curves it is very simple and all we have to do is we just have to join uh, rather we just have to make the perpendicular bisectors and uh, take the centers the radius and draw the arcs and we will get this thing so this is how we will draw circles in isometric projections now if we look at the semicircle now semicircle is nothing there is no special step about drawing a semicircle it's exactly the same what we will have to do is we will have to extend we will have to extend the square which contains this uh, semicircle so right now it is the rectangle we will have to extend it we will have to just assume that there is other part of the circle which is going to we, we, we won't draw it we are just going to take the the reference square okay now we will start drawing it we do not have to completely draw okay i will tell you how we will arrive at that so i'm assuming the simple simple positions here so suppose we will take this one parallel to hp okay so now what we have actually this is the full square now what we actually have is this rectangle a b c and d so this is the line of the semicircle which we have now what we have is we already know that this is the point 1 c and d okay now we know so if i join this okay and if i join this and i take this as a this one as a center you will be able to arrive at the arc here and if i take this as a center we will be able to arrive at the arc here and our semicircle is drawn so what essentially we have is we do not need this we do not need the rest of the 
So, all we have to do is we just have to extend one arm of the square one of arm of the rectangle equal to the other side of the rectangle to arrive at this point. This is already there we do not need it we just need the one center here and we need the other one here which is how we will be able to draw the, the semicircle. So, this is what we will do whenever we are drawing semicircle we just have to see which one which arm to extend and which you will you will know when you start drawing it you would know that which one to extend ok. Just for the ease I am I am drawing this entire thing this is the this is the line of the semicircle this is this point and now what we have here is we have to join this. Now, how do you know this? We will always have the uh, we will have one obtuse angle and one acute angle. So, all we have to do is we have to extend the arm which is contained by the acute angle and you will arrive at your results ok. So, this is what we are we are going to uh, take. So, now what we have here is so we have the center we have the smaller part of the of the ellipse and taking this as the center we have the larger part of the ellipse and this is how you will see your hemisphere uh, semicircle coming. So, what I said that we can just extend the arm which is containing the acute angle and we should be able to do it without drawing much ok like this. So, you can actually repeat this entire process with with any other uh, you know possibility of the semicircle or circle coming. I am just showing you how to draw you have to draw I am drawing it all freehand, but you have to draw it using proper stationery a board maybe you will need a T police set square drafter whatever you are using you have to use the proper stationary tools and you have to try doing it on sheet that is when you will be you will be able to uh, you know understand the whole process. So, always do it uh, in a proper manner So, we just repeat the same process I have arrived at the center and this. So, we get the same picture, but being viewed from different angles from different positions we will get different uh, you know uh, drawings actually. So, the object remains the same this was not the case when we were doing the orthographic projections. If we were looking at an object with given condition in front view or top view it will remain the same the only difference there was being brought because of the quadrant we were viewing the object in. Here even if the object is in first quadrant depending upon uh, how we are viewing it or how it is placed in which plane we will see all this difference occurring ok. So, this is what we are seeing in isometric drawing. Let us take another example ok. So, this one we have fairly done ok. Let us take this example here. Now, what we have here is we have two arcs basically quadrant of a circle ok. So, we have two of them. So, we have one quadrant here and the other one here right. So, what we have is we have some straight portion and we have the circle ok part of the circle we have to draw it exactly like that. So, we will just assume the dimensions for it and we will start drawing ok. Now, I will start drawing it in simple. So, uh, in a plane which is parallel to H B. So, suppose this is I will just uh, number it again. So, this is P Q and if I say A B C D this is M N uh, ok O and this one remains say R ok. So, now we have to locate these points. So, let us do that this is the first line which we have drawn here is C D and let us take this C 
say A and B here. Now, what we have to do is we have to locate the center point P, center point for the circle, which means that there is a square which is enclosing this circle of which this arc is a part. Okay. So, now what we have say this is this is R and this is O. Okay. Okay, maybe I have to assume a different dimension. I will draw it again. So, why, why I did not continue with this one is because of the dimensions. Okay. So, if it is 2 units, 2 units, 2, 2, 1 and this one becomes 6 and 1 and 2 and let us do this again. So, let us take these 6 units here and here we will take 3 units, 6 again here. Okay. Now, A, B, C and D, this one is R and this one is O. Okay. Now, what I have for this particular the first arc we have this is M. Okay. Now, this is a part of the circle. Now, if I have to complete the circle, what do I have to do? I am going to take a different ink color. Now, this distance A M if I take exactly the same distance further up and the same distance here, this is tentatively the the square which is going to enclose this entire circle. Now, what we are looking at here is only this arc between R and M. So, what we will do just like we did previously. Okay. And I join it there. This one becomes the center for this arc, right? This R D is a straight line, this D C is a straight line. Okay. This part is clear, and then we have this point which is N okay, and O. So, till this point, now we have to draw the arc between N and O, and now again what we have to do is we have to know what is the other part of the square. So, for this part of this circle this arc we have to again extend and get the tentative square which is going to hold it and I will again draw the perpendicular bisectors. Okay. This is so this is the center this being the radius we will just join this and this is how we will get this figure. So, if you understand in any any figure for that matter all we have to do is ascertain where those points are coming and in case we have uh, say uh, part of the circle appearing we have to ascertain where that square is where will that square be which is enclosing this full circle. So, here we saw that the full circle in this case is actually being enclosed by a square which is somewhere here and for this one there is another one which is which is here. So, all we have to do is identify where those enclosing those reference squares are going to be we do not really need to draw the complete squares you will not need to do that and why I draw it in light color is to make it very clear that these are all reference lines. These are all just for the reference to arrive at the centers which are needed to draw these are not the final ones. So, these are going to be drawn very very light and sometimes you may even not need to draw them fully. Okay. It is just for your reference we will just extend this arrive at the uh, the intersection points and that is about it. Once you have that you will draw the part of the square uh, the, the circles and the rest of the straight lines are anyways very easy to draw as we have already seen in the previous lecture. You can assume this this same figures in the same plane in a vertical plane which is perpendicular to both the reference planes or 
perpendicular to one, parallel to another or we could also be taking any of these in an inclined plane. So, for example, uh, if it was a simple circle and if we have to assume that the circle is being drawn uh, or rather it is making an angle of say 30 degrees with, uh, with HP. So, what we would do? just as we did yesterday. So, the square is actually getting inclined. So, what we will do if you look at it in the uh, uh, orthographic projection, originally we have a circle here and in the front view for example, we will just see a line. Okay. Now, here is the square which encloses the circle. Okay. This is what we have to draw again when we are doing isometric. Now, suppose it gets inclined by 30 degrees here. So, 30 degrees Okay. Now, we will, so we have say divided the circle into whatever number of parts, say 12 parts here. Okay. So, we will, we will bring all those points back just as we did and then we will bring it back. So, what you will see here is, which is what we have observed earlier in our part 1 of the course, orthographic, this is, this is what you are going to be seeing. Now, the reference is slightly reduced. This is exactly what we are going to draw. We now have this. So, this is no more a circle. This is actually a, this is originally a circle, but what we are seeing here is an ellipse. So, what we will draw here? So, suppose we have this x, y and z. Okay. Now, if I have to draw this, so on the ground, which is this rectangle, so, we will be drawing, so this is where the horizontal trace of this square is going to be, right. And if you look at it in the height, you will actually be seeing a rectangle again. So, say this is the rectangle in the elevation, okay. We will draw it in both the places. So, I am taking two units height, this is what it is. So, what we have is, this is just the reference where this circle is going to be enclosed, right. So, this circle is actually going to be in this rectangle or rather this is again, I think this will come out to be a rhombus and now we will again mark. So, what we have is, we have midpoint of this one, midpoint of this, midpoint of this. Okay. And now, if we have to join these, we can actually use the same process. And arrive at the final shape for this, for this ellipse. Now, this is actually a circle which is inclined at 30 degrees to the horizontal plane. Okay. This is what we have tried to draw here and it is perpendicular to the vertical plane. It could be the other situation. All we have to do every time we are looking at such a uh, you know, uh, problem or condition is to look at its horizontal trace, draw it in horizontal, look at its vertical trace and then draw its vertical trace. And again, if this was this, we would just take these heights differently and then arrive at all these points. We can actually arrive at these points individually. So, for example, if I do not know and if suppose this one does not fit, if the plane is inclined to both the planes, then what do we do? What we are going to do is the traces. So, suppose there were the not suppose there are these 12 points. So, what is the horizontal trace of this point? say 1, 2, 3 like that we will number just like we do all the time 11 and 12. Now, we are looking at 1. Now, 1 is at the middle of this rectangle in horizontal and vertically 1 is at 0. Okay. Now, if you look at the 7 which is here, the 7 is at middle of this and it has a height of this much. This is what we took. So, we are certain 1 and 7. Now, this was 4, 4 is at the end, this is what the horizontal trace is and then the height of 4 which is here. So, we raise it and we get this point number 4 
here and the similar thing we will do here which is which is 10 right. Similarly, we can actually arrive at this 11, 12 and like that. So, we may not uh, sometimes we may not be in a position to draw the projections of the circle using this radius and diameter uh, radius and uh, center method. We will not be able to do that. We will ascertain their horizontal trace and their vertical trace for all the points whatever we are we are discussing ok. So, this is what you are going to be seeing where what horizontally vertically where these points are coming and accordingly you can you can actually arrive at all the 12 points right and you will be able to draw but this is a tedious method. Of course, if the condition is critical probably you may need to uh, do it this way but this is a foolproof method this would not go wrong it might take time but this will not go wrong. So, however, in most of the conditions you would probably not be needing this but in case you do then we go this way. So, I will stop here and uh, we have discussed about how to draw isometric drawing of the curves curved surfaces uh, sorry planar surfaces but curves circles semicircles and uh, polygons which include curves. So, thank you very much for being with me we will continue with isometric drawing of other planar objects in the uh, subsequent lectures of this week. Thank you bye bye.